Hi, I'm Adrian. I work on the Flash team here at Adobe. Uh, today I'm going to show you another device that's got Flash Player 10.1 running on it. Uh, this is a Toshiba TG01. We're here in the lab, so we've still got it connected here while we're doing some testing. Uh, it's running Windows Mobile. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting about it is it's got the Qualcomm Snapdragon chip on it, which makes it possible for it to have this really uh, high fidelity, high resolution screen. So there's a lot of power in the Snapdragon chip. I wanted to show you an application that's got a lot of detail and, and depends a lot on that fidelity. Uh, and so in particular, I'm going to show you Google Finance and give you a sense for, for how that works on this screen. So I'm going to click in here and let's zoom in, QQQQ. Uh, go ahead and drop that into Google Finance so we can take a look at how the NASDAQ's been doing over the last uh, day or so. So it pulls up this chart. Uh, very detailed information on here. The fidelity of the screen becomes really critical for being able to interact with it. Uh, I can grab the chart and I can slide it. Uh, and as I slide it, you see new data flowing in. So it's using web services, hitting Google, pulling in that new information. Uh, the other thing that's happening here is over on the right-hand side, if I slide here to the right, uh, you can see there's this, this table of specific activities that have been happening. So if I click on one of those, uh, it'll redraw the graph to move over to that specific location. Go back over here. I can click on a specific event, and you see that it gets highlighted over here on the right-hand side. So there's really good interaction going on here between the HTML on the right-hand side and Flash. Uh, we see Google do this a lot with their applications. Uh, they like to build their applications primarily in HTML and JavaScript. And when they run into something that they can't do using HTML and JavaScript, like this chart and the interactivity within the chart, then they'll go ahead and use Flash. And so the way that Flash interoperates with those other web technologies makes it really easy for them to build those great user experiences. Again, this is the TG01, it's a Snapdragon chip, and it's one of the uh, devices that we're looking forward to having Flash Player 10.1 running on in the near future. So. Uh, just wanted to show you another example of Flash Player 10.1. Uh, it's going to be coming uh, as a beta later this year. Uh, so you can go up to Adobe Labs right now and take a look at some of the information about it. Uh, and what you'll find uh, is it's going to be delivering a consistent runtime to smartphone devices like this one, to netbooks, uh, and to PCs. So whether you're Google or whether you're a small shop and you can only you know, support one runtime and can't afford to develop for a lot of different environments, uh, Flash is a good way for you to be able to build it once and get it to run across a lot of these different devices. So I would encourage you to go up to Adobe Labs. There's a lot of information coming about what's going to be in Flash Player 10.1. A uh, number of new features both to make your content work really well on devices like performance enhancements, but also things like support for multi-touch and accelerometer. Um, so great new release that's coming. Uh, I would encourage you to, to get more information. Thank you very much.